let's just make sure that we give it a little bit of a lead in and we'll start right about there. Hey everybody, Andrew Link here, and we're about to talk about storytelling through photography. Uh, and I gotta tell you, I need to keep this one brief, because the problem is that I love storytelling, and I don't want to ramble on for 45 minutes about how to tell stories through pictures or storytelling in general. So we're going to keep it focused on the guidebook and the examples, and I'll try not to extemporaneize too much. So, storytelling through photography. Listen, people have been telling stories for thousands, if not tens of thousands of years. The earliest cave paintings that we can find, the earliest evidence that we have of human civilization is people telling stories. And they're like painting pictures of going on a hunt and uh, painting pictures of daily life just on the walls of caves. And then, then we have stories that are carved into cuneiform tablets. We have stories that are carved into wood and read by people who can just like touch the wood and remember that this is the part of the story they're supposed to tell right now. There's Storytelling has been with us for a very long time. And just because we have photography now instead of a cave painting doesn't mean that storytelling is going away. So let's go ahead and talk about what you need to do to tell good stories through your photographs. All right. So... I'm going to give you a quick example. This is the story of our dog. This is Oliver. He's a delightful little poodle. And not so little anymore. And let me tell you the story of Oliver. We got Oliver back in, I want to say it was October. And he was tiny, less than a month old. Just an adorable little bundle of fuzz. Within a couple of weeks of bringing him home, he started chewing on things. Not too terribly. In fact, it was rather cute how when we took all the dogs out on the front porch and uh, lined them up to take a picture, uh, he, he was chewing on the pumpkins. It was so cute. And then, of course, he's a puppy, so he's teething, and, you know, he's got to chew in order to get his uh, new teeth to, you know, come out and get his old teeth to fall out. So we, you know, let him chew on things like milk bottles in addition to the usual appropriate things for puppies to chew on. He would also chew on the other dogs. He would also chew on his own tail and on his feet. He chewed on everything. And eventually, as he got bigger and older and we needed to work him and give him more energy, my daughter would take a pet, uh, not a pet, take a stuffed schnauzer. It was literally like a stuffed version of the other dogs. Tie it to the end of a lunge whip uh, who used for training horses and just spin in a circle with the uh, little stuffed schnauzer at the end of the whip, and Oliver would just chase and chase and chase, going after that stuffed dog for a whole long while. And then, then he got bigger. And we started thinking we could trust him because he wasn't having accidents in the house anymore and he wasn't destroying random things too often. And so one day we left him out instead of putting him in a kennel. And we came home from the grocery store to find that he had completely destroyed a pair of slippers. That is the story. Which you can see just by following the pictures. You don't need me telling you that story. We can see that there's a cute little puppy. And then that puppy with the same markings looks a little bit bigger and is chewing on something. And then that same puppy with those same markings is even larger and chewing on another thing. And then that same dog looks even bigger but is still chasing stuff and still using his mouth a bunch. And then 
the dog, just about fully grown, is looking very um, awkward with a shaming sign placed in front of him in front of some damaged slippers. This is the story you can get just by looking at the photos. And so I want to encourage you to make sure that you tell a story in your pictures this week. Okay? Um, remember, you should have a central character of some sort. You should take us on an emotional journey. It doesn't necessarily have to be as long as the journey with this dog. But it should be an emotional journey. A journey of discovery. A journey of learning. A good story should have an arc to it. Your character should be introduced. We should follow them as they face challenges. And then, as we reach the top of the arc, the climax, your character should either change dramatically and overcome their problems, or have a sudden twist and show that their problems still exist, or perhaps that they have gone full villain mode. There's many ways that you can take the story, but the important part is you need to have a character, you need to take us on a path through multiple events that show something about that character, and then we should have a dramatic revelation of some sort at the end. Now, there are other ways to tell stories. I will say, uh, the introduction picture uh, that was up here right at the beginning and this picture were both taken at the uh, Baltimore County dump. Uh, we had gone there to uh, get rid of some stuff from a relative's house that was being cleaned out. And as we were dropping things off, it was impossible not to notice that there were tens of thousands of seagulls. And those seagulls were not where you'd expect them to be. They were not at the sea or even on a bay. Of course, that's where bagels are from. Anyway, those seagulls were in the wrong place. They were at a dump and they were shripping apart, just shredding all of this trash looking for food. And even more strangely, among the seagulls were several bald eagles. And you don't usually think of bald eagles, that proud symbol of America, as being the sort of bird that would perch on top of a uh, bulldozer at a dump looking for some trash to eat. And so, the story of those photos is hard to put into words. It's one of those a picture is worth a thousand words kind of things. But the story I'm t trying to tell in these photos is something that makes us reflect. Just like the character arc should bring us up through several pictures and then have a dramatic twist or revelation or change or moment of growth, a single picture can also tell a story. But that single picture should challenge our assumptions. It should make us think. It should make us go, why are there so many seagulls in land? What impact does our consumerism have on nature? What impact does all of the trash we throw away have on the natural behavior of wildlife? Makes you think. And that's what you should be trying to do if you do tell a story in just one picture, or maybe a couple pictures. Challenge our assumptions about something and make us think about what the story could be. So a few challenges for you to get you started off. Um, make sure that you have a clear and easy to identify subject. We're telling a story here. We shouldn't have to really fight to understand what the story is about. We should be working to understand the narrative of the story or the importance or the lesson of the story, but we should know what we're looking at. 
try to tell a story that has a beginning, challenges, twists, and a strong ending. It might be a lesson being learned. It might be a problem being solved. It might be an attempt to solve a problem that ends in failure. But tell a story that has a beginning, challenges, and then a twist or a lesson. Try using the environment to enhance your story. By that I mean use the backgrounds. Use your focus. Really make it all a part of the story. Make your whole picture matter. Like I just talked about, try telling a story in a single photo. I mean, even this picture right here, this is just an example of um, somebody with these really, really dumb, I would even say uh, aggressive, um, one might even wonder if they should be illegal tire spikes attached to their vehicle. And the spikes even have metal flaking off of it. All the paint is flaking off. What? What kind of person is driving this vehicle? And talking about environmental storytelling, about using the whole picture, I made sure that when I captured this, I had the buildings distorted up there in the, uh, in the reflection on the side of the vehicle. I made sure that we had like the red stripe of the fire lane and really focused on and made those spikes pop because I wanted it to look dramatic and threatening. And of course, if you don't think you can quite pull it off in a single picture, if you don't feel like you can take one picture, or you just don't, or, or if you do take one picture, but you also want to challenge yourself to try something more, move beyond just taking one picture that tells us a story and makes us question things, and try taking a picture, or a, I'm sorry, try taking a sequence of pictures that tell a story. It doesn't have to be big and important and dramatic and thoughtful, and it doesn't have to be a collection of pi pictures of a puppy over the last eight months. It could be the story of making an omelet. It could be the story of feeding your pets. It doesn't even have to involve food, which both of those examples did. But make sure that your story tells a series of events and that we have an escalation to a twist or a lesson. Okay, I'm going to stop there because I could talk about storytelling for hours and we need to stop. So have a delightful week, everybody, and I hope that you tell some amazing stories through your photography. See you next week. And, uh, you know, feel free to reply in the comments. Even if you're not in one of my classes, you can reply in the comments. If you are in my classes, let's keep the comments in the classroom so that we can all reply to them. But, uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from all of you. Uh, those of you who are not in my classes, make sure you check my website out, andrewlink.com. Uh, there are links there for my out school lessons. There are links there for my private lessons. There are links there for just downloading my guides. And I guess I might as well do that whole like and subscribe. All right. See you later. Take some great photos. Can't wait to see what y'all come up with. And this is me awkwardly staring because I couldn't get my mouse over to the stop button.